Hey everyone, I'm Cedrice and this is Matt on the guitar. We're gonna sing an original called Woman. Maybe they seem happy with their babies. If I was a mother, he would want to be with me. Maybe I just think too much. I don't want to be a lady hiding all these things about me. You know, because I get insecure, I'm immature, but I want my love to rub up on my terrier, spending all my time. Watching everybody's grind Thinking I ain't doing much I'm not really doing much Someone throw it up on me I feel like What's it gonna take to be a woman? Is it gonna hurt to be a woman? Yeah, what's it gonna mean to be a woman? A woman I'm gonna look in the mirror Proud to be the image when I see her If I was another, I'd be sitting here with me Thinking, you've got all my love I've been dealing with the devils Believing that my ways are trouble, yeah But I got everything I'll ever need I learned to trust the feeling deep inside of me Spending all my time placing Pieces where they're right thinking I'll be doing it, yeah, I'm really doing this Someone throw it up for me, I feel like What's it gonna take to be a woman? Is it gonna hurt to be a woman? What's it gonna mean to be a woman? A woman, a woman If I'm the only one, maybe, or maybe I won't see it through but if I'm the only one, I am the only one telling the truth Call me selfish cause the independent things I do Call me a witch cause I'm righteous and I tell the truth Say my life is a facade that me enlighten you I am the living proof of what my God can do To be a woman Is it gonna hurt to be a woman? A woman What's it gonna mean to be a woman? A woman A woman What's it gonna take to be a woman? Is it gonna hurt to be a woman? What's it gonna mean to be a woman? A woman Incredible, incredible. Hello and a very warm welcome to this QSC Play Out Loud live stream event. Uh, my name's Colby Ramsey. I'm a content creator for Headline and Magazine, a uh, music and audio news platform based in London here in the UK. I must say I'm very excited to be hosting this event today and to be talking to Cedrice Weber uh, and what an astonishing vocal she has and what a lovely song uh, that we were just treated to a taste of there. Uh, Cedrice is a San Diego based artist, perhaps best known for her appearance on The Voice. Um, Cedrice, it's lovely to be able to speak to you today, albeit Thank from across you. the pond. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Good, good. May I just begin um, by asking you to give viewers a little bit of background about yourself and to give us a bit of a rundown of your musical journey? Yeah, so I have been singing professionally for about four and a half years now, and my journey has been pretty fast. Um, every year it seems like I get introduced to so many amazing people. Um, I'm an actress as well. I've been a spokeswoman for multiple different events, including TEDx. Um, and so I'm just really just a girl from San Diego trying to squeeze out all the gifts that I have and um, just give everyone so much positivity <laughs> in their life. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And uh, how have things been for you at the moment? Uh, 
the last few months obviously a bit of a time for a lot of people with what's going on in the world and um especially for music creators i think uh so how's how have you kind of found it well i mean my partner here we we perform together all the time matt he's on the guitar uh we've been creating a lot of music here in our home studio um I've been fortunate enough to have at least one residency during this time, but you know, in the first couple of months, it was it was really weird. Um, you know, everything shut down, um, but it it really forced us in a place where we needed to generate and uh, figure out different ideas to be innovative with you know how we move forward. So it's been it's been a mix of anxiety and boredom and insecurity because I'm like oh man do I want to be a singer anymore am I even that good <laughs> but you know these last few months have been have been really good great stuff that's great to hear that and um great to hear that you're keeping busy as well uh you know it's a time when I think people are listening to more music than ever actually you know they've got a lot of time to listen to music so and for yourself um you know, you can kind of channel your energies into to writing and spending some time in the studio, taking a step back and really kind of um, putting your putting your um, focus back into the music, which is great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's definitely been been the challenge, um, and we've had some good wins in that as well. So it's really assuring. Great stuff. Great stuff. So QSC created its first play out loud video short with you um which is just awesome uh and we would like to premiere it now for the first time uh on the air so here it is When I was in college, I was studying communication and I wanted to work with TV or film. But in the first year, I just felt like there was this lull in my soul and this hole in my heart. I fell into a deep depression uh, for a while. I started seeing a therapist and it wasn't any of that that helped me. <laughs> uh, figure out that I wanted to sing, but it was just a um, an interaction that I had with another musician who was sitting next to me on campus. Uh, he was studying business and he heard me singing and he was like, hey, you sound great. You know, do you can you sing me a little something? So I did. And he invited me to go to a rehearsal with his band. And in the midst of my depression, I got a taste of light from that rehearsal. An acquaintance of mine had passed away and she was going to the university that I transferred to. And she was a singer and uh, she passed away. And when, when she left, I feel like there was a side of me that really woke up and thought, oh man, if I pass away tomorrow, I would be so mad at myself for not going all in. I haven't fulfilled everything that I want to do, you know. At that time, music was all that kept me alive, really, and that made me feel like getting up in the morning. So when that person passed away, I just, I knew I owed it to myself to try something that brought me life, to try something that made me happy. Sometimes people don't give themselves permission to feel a certain way or to dive into a certain aspect of their own personality or their own life and I think music does that for a lot of people. When I'm singing my songs I feel empowered because I'm writing songs about being insecure but then also being confident in the person that I am and leaning into um, the things that I aspire to be. What's it gonna take to be my song Woman is about me growing into my womanhood and not exactly knowing if I have arrived or even knowing if that is a ground that I can stand on now or just a bunch of questions that I think a lot of young women have. I think music in general, and I would like to be an example of this as well, is to 
inspire people and to almost give permission to, to, to feel how they want to feel and be okay with that and then move on, keep growing and then feel how they feel in that aspect of their life. What I really like about Play Out Loud is that it is an empowering phrase. I feel like I'm playing out loud the most when I am singing songs that feel empowering, that make me feel independent, that make me feel like I can also lean into my insecurities and express them out to everybody. And that phrase, play out loud, reminds me of of the idea of not being silenced and having the audacity to show who you are. Um, if I'm sad, I'm going to sing it out loud. If I'm insecure, I'm going to sing it out loud. And if I'm happy, I'm going to sing it out loud. Is it going to hurt to be a woman? A woman. What's it going to mean to be a woman? That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, lovely video there, which uh, kind of sums up your your journey, and and obviously um, you clearly have a an incredible emotional connection with music, and the the amount of inspiration that goes into your your songwriting, and your lyrics um, is all founded on uh, you know honesty and your life experiences, which is just it's just wonderful. I mean, woman uh, is is a uh, an incredible song which is obviously uh, like you say it's empowering and it's uh, it's it's really you know the message is really powerful um which is great uh and aside from singing uh you you briefly touched on it earlier you're also a spokeswoman um and, you know you've given presentations and talks on a, on a range of topics um again all quite empowering uh kind of topics you know being your authentic self and self-confidence. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I've definitely spoken at a couple events um, that has also kept me accountable for being confident and honest and authentic um, in my own life. Um, you know, I believe if you speak about it, you definitely have to be about it. And I have been challenged in my young adult life to um, to really just embrace myself and embrace whatever chapter I am in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, people have been inspired by that. And, you know, in TEDx, I spoke about identity and how I identified or I was so confused with my background, my ethnic background. I'm black, white, Filipino, and there's a bunch of little different seasonings in there too. Um, and I just didn't know which one I should be more of because I felt like I was so, um, um, I was so much of everything else that I didn't know what I identified with, you know? Um, and at high schools, I've spoken about just enjoying your journey and figuring out what really makes you feel alive so that when you go into college, when you go into the real world, you don't, you're not questioning who you are. You know you have a good idea of who you're trying to be and that you know, dictates the path ahead of you or the actions that you take. Um, so that's kind of what I've spoken on and what I've been um, definitely kept accountable for in my own life. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, a wonderful thing uh, that you're involved with um and uh definitely something that uh it's just it's something that people can really connect with as with you know with you as an artist um and as a kind of uh, spokeswoman for 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 the you know the everything that you kind of stand for and i was you know you, I, I mentioned you are kind of best known musically for your appearance on the voice um the last season of the voice which was season 18 um, but you've you've been on there a few times, haven't you? And kind of progressed further each time. Uh, how how was that whole experience? Um, that whole experience, I feel like, deserves a whole chapter on its own in my life. <laughs> so um, I have alopecia. That's why I'm bald. And you know, there's a weird identity thing with your hair. Like you get it cut off, and you're like, oh gosh, who am I? <laughs> so when I was 18 years old, I auditioned for The Voice. And I noticed that when, when, you know, looking back, 
my um, my identity as like a woman wearing a wig and going through alopecia and all that was so parallel with my artistry. And so what I was doing with music, I was copying Christina Aguilera if I was singing Christina Aguilera songs. I was singing just like Bruno Mars when I was covering his songs. And the voice really, um, like they could see that, they recognized that. Then at 22, I came in and auditioned again, and I was wearing a headscarf. And I started singing something a little bit more like intimate, uh, just more bluesy, like a Sam Cooke song. Okay. And, um, you know, people just love that. And they said, we're not going to have you um, go through just yet because we feel like there's something else you need to learn. There's something else you need to embody. And I was like, okay. So then the third time I auditioned, I had no wig and I had a better sense of who I was as an artist and as a person. And so it's just funny how all of that is so tied in. And it's been a huge chapter in my life. Incredible. Incredible. And uh, the show is known for being uh, quite brutal, isn't it? And it's kind of when it gets to the elimination rounds. Um, what, <laughs> what did the experience of being on there kind of teach you about um, kind of like the music industry as a whole, I guess? I think being on the show I realize how important it is to have a sense of who you are um, being on TV can definitely alter your own image of yourself you know and so if you go in not understanding where you want to go or what your goals are or what you want to take from the experience then you kind of just flap everywhere else and you, and you just kind of go with the flow you sing songs you don't really want to sing you wear clothes you don't really think represent you you know um, so being on the show really assured me that, okay, I'm in a good space and this is exactly what people were seeing uh, was lacking in the past. So um, that was something that I thought was really important. Yeah, for sure. And I like that, like you say, it, it tied in with kind of your evolution and your development as a, as a musical artist, as well as um, what you were going through as a person. Um, and kind of by the time you know you were on the voice for the third time people were seeing you in your most true form really you know Sidri's in her final form and this was you know what you see is what you get and that truthfulness obviously comes through in your music as well um and that honesty which is really great what has um what has what has life been like since since the voice well there's been a lot going on in 2020 <laughs> so the voice happened and everything was on pause like we talked about earlier. And I think the biggest difference is that every time I go to Target, everyone notices me. <laughs> um, you know, with the COVID thing, everyone's social distancing, a lot of events are canceled, so I can't make physical appearances. But as people are getting more comfortable with coming out and, and performing, um, I've been able to get a little inch of maybe what I missed right after um, the show was finished airing. So life after The Voice has been um, not too much to handle, which is nice. Um, and it's also opened up some doors for me um, in acting, surprisingly. Um, and in a lot of interviews, of, of course, and I love that. So <laughs> yeah. it hasn't been too much. It's been good. Okay. Fantastic. So if you what would you have been doing this year if we hadn't been kind of locked down? Would you have been touring or? Yeah. I would, I would be, um, I would be doing a lot of acting. Okay. Um, and of course on my spare time, not, well, not even spare time when I'm not acting, I would be working on my album. Um, so right now I kind of, we're working into it now. My, my album. Okay. Great stuff. Uh, just wanted to ask in uh kind of generally speaking you mentioned it in your in your play out loud video um but how much are you really kind of missing playing live at the moment it's something that um live music has been completely kind of ground to a halt since mm -hmm. since all this um and like we said earlier you know people are finding time to to get back in the studio and then focus a bit more of their efforts there but mm -hmm. how what's been kind of like the weirdest thing for you um, in terms of like not being out on the road, um, playing live? 
Um, you know, I think before the um, social distancing and before uh, the voice, I had already known that I didn't want to gig so much um, because it was it gets really tiring, um, and you realize that you're just kind of playing it like a, a regular job that you tried to avoid in the first place, becoming a musician. Um, and so now this space has definitely allowed me to, to generate more ideas for, for new music and be more creative with my music videos. Um, um, sorry, I think I, <laughs> I think I forgot what your question was. I was um, just saying about playing live and being missing being out yeah. on the road and stuff, you know? Yeah. So um, I think all of this has definitely come in a time where um, I already knew that the next step was to generate what I am going to come out with. And then when COVID r passes, um, then I actually have the opportunity to go full out and, and tour and perform. So I think, I don't know, I feel like this is probably serendipitous for me, uh, but mm. I definitely miss performing. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can I can imagine it's uh, it's just really strange, isn't it? This kind of limbo that we're in at the moment. Um, yeah. And so earlier you played us uh, "Woman," which uh, is an incredible song. Um, and uh, I'd like I think we'd like to hear another one actually. Um, I'm sure our viewers would um, certainly. So if uh, there's anything else that you guys can uh, can play for us, that would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I just released this song called Room to Grow, which is um, kind of a, a, a song that came during a time where I was just feeling really lonely and really cold. Um, so I wrote this song with my friend Mark Pelly. We just released it last month and we just released the music video as well. So yeah, we could definitely sing that to you. down I can demystify a few things show you where I came from a reason with your insecurities while you can retain all your love I'd rather make you feel good no conditions to my game it's okay for you to say no you don't owe me anything I'll hold my promise to us I wanna be someone you trust We can give it room, give it room to grow But we don't need to be, need to be alone Wanting you is all that I can give I wanna take the time to figure out another way to live And I'll hold the promise you got There's nothing like the real thing And you know I don't wanna let you go Because I love the way you love me But maybe we should try to take it slow my word is all that I've got I wanna be someone you trust We can give it room, give it room to grow But we don't need to be, need to be alone We can give it room, give it room to grow we don't need to be, 
another beautiful song. Thank you. That was lovely, Cedric. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. So that's obviously a song about about love. Uh, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, Where it's about the, unconditional uh, love. Sorry. <laughs> Sure, it is. It certainly is about unconditional love. Where did the um, where did that kind of idea or concept come from, and what was your kind of songwriting process like uh, for that yes. record? I was in um, New York, and like I said, I was going through a really weird time. I was very emotional, and I needed to write something that gave me comfort in that time. So I was acting off Broadway in New York and it was like the worst winter in history. Um, so it was in 2017 and I wrote the first verse and um, it's kind of a reflection of my conversation with God. Um, so I'm saying, or no, God is saying, hey, I can love you through this time. And I'm saying, uh, I think I'm good. I think I got it, you know? And so I'm apprehensively declining the offer uh, mm -hmm. because I don't know how to give unconditional love, you know, at that time. And um, so it's just kind of like a bounce back and forth of the conversation between me and God or my, my idea of it. And uh, the chorus is, we can give it room, give it room to grow. God is saying we can give our relationship room to grow. Um, and you know, just know that you don't have to be alone. So that's kind of my thought. And then back in 2019, two years later, I linked up with Mark, met him in LA randomly, and um, we ended up putting something together and we built it together in like four hours. And it took us six hours to um, write it from start to finish um, and have it produced and everything. So it was, it was beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So you, you record and produce music, or oh, sorry, publish music uh, mm -hmm. as, as an independent artist, don't you? Um, that's kind of juggling all those aspects of, of music must be quite, uh, quite taxing, you know, in terms of juggling that with your creative process as well. Um, how do you kind of approach that? I think I am figuring it out like every other independent artist. You know, I feel like there's no one right way to do it, um, to, to market yourself, to brand yourself. Um, and there's so many resources out there right now. Um, so right now, you know, it, it, it almost seems like 10% or 20% of it is writing the music and, and producing it. And then 80% is getting it out there. So for me, I've, I've been able to figure out some things on social media, some things in music distri distribution, but, you know, I'm just kind of figuring it out like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's weird, isn't it? Everyone's, I mean, especially now, everyone's in the same boat, um, so to speak, with, with what's going on. But it's just, uh, think people are finding their own way to adapt, aren't they? And to, um, and to, to just find their, find their own way, I guess. Uh, yeah. In terms of what kind of advice would you give to kind of aspiring artists trying to make their way in the industry? Um, kind of what are your sort of like do's and don'ts um, that you would sort of recommend? Um, well, I will say when someone is just starting out, um, um, I think I can only go on my personal experience. Sure, you know, I did sure. a lot of busking on the street with no pay, just getting tips, um, just to get exposure. And that turned out to be a blessing in disguise, going to open mics, um, networking, and figuring out what kind of music I wanted to sing, what kind of music uh, resonates with me. And that helped me develop like the route I wanted to take. Um, so, I would definitely suggest to, to do stuff like that. You know, you can't expect to get paid $600 for a gig right out the gate. <laughs> um, to be honest, we all kind of struggle at first in every, in every uh, career path. Um, so definitely have this sense of like, what can I learn from this, ex uh, sorry, <laughs> what can I learn from this experience? And, um, and then figure out what kind of artist you want to be. 
What kind of what what do you want to challenge? Um, what do you want to champion? Uh, definitely think of stuff like that. Because um, I feel like when you feel a need uh, in the world and um, you have a talent, you can find a bridge between that, you know? And I think that's what will make you successful. And be honest. Be honest with what you're putting out there too. Yeah. Yeah, very important that I think. Um, and I love that that's uh, kind of very fundamental in your in your outlook and your um in your professional career as well what are you currently working on uh Cedric, if you um if i may ask uh at the moment what is there in the pipeline uh which we can um which we can look forward to from yourself um like i said during this time i'm definitely forced to be still and generate so i'm playing um let me see, I'm playing with my editing skills so that I can <laughs> try to produce my own music videos and little fun stuff. Um, you know, I have a children's book in the works right now um, about alopecia, just spreading awareness about that and um, creating more comfort for, for, for kids. Um, I was diagnosed with alopecia at 10 years old and September is the month of alopecia areata awareness. So I have that. Um, and also we're working on an EP, of a mixture of his music and my music. I have another single coming out next month. So all little fun stuff. Yeah, oh, just trying oh. to keep it going for y'all. Keep you entertained. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure you will. Uh, this sounds like there's lots to lots for your fans to be excited about and um and i for one am uh, am also excited um how can uh, how can others uh, follow you what's the uh kind of the best way for 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 us to follow you um online socially yeah um i think the best way to follow me is to go to my website misssedrice.com and that's where everything is um uh, my vlogs on YouTube, my music on Spotify, my social media. So it's mssadrice.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I would urge uh, viewers to follow Sadrice if you don't already uh, across social media and, and on her website, as she just mentioned, and uh, look for new music coming soon because uh, that's just a really exciting prospect. Um, and yeah, that's going to be. That's going to be really great. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Headliner um, is a is a music and production magazine for the creative community. Uh, we produce podcasts, videos, events, and uh, publish a range of, of music-related news and content for artists and professionals across the industry. Um, we will be featuring Sidris in an upcoming Aspiring Artist podcast, um, which I'm very excited about, as well as a magazine article in our US issue. Uh, so be sure to follow Headliner Magazine on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Headliner Radio on Spotify, Apple Music, or, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And um, and again, uh, make sure you follow Sidris, um, because she's got a lot of exciting exciting work uh, coming up, and lots of uh, lots of good cool music to to look forward to. I'm sure. Um, is it is it an album then, uh, Sidris, that we can that we can look forward to? Somewhere between an EP and an album, it's still in the okay. works. Um, it could okay. be anywhere between seven to 14 songs. Okay, okay. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Uh, Sidris, it's been so nice to talk to you um, on this on this interview, and, th and thanks so much for joining us today. It's been truly lovely to talk to you. Um, just want to thank everyone for, for tuning in to watch, and uh, remember to play out loud. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to meet you, Colby. Goodbye. Thanks, Idris. You take care. Best of luck. You too. Cheers.